So now I come to the second subchapter, information-centric networking. And that really is a completely different communication paradigm that is more in a research state. There are some networks, but this is currently not the way the internet works. So what is the motivation for ICN's information-centric networking? So one clearly is how also can we distribute content more efficiently? So for example, if you are a customer here and you have some content there, some more customers somewhere, and then we have all these networks in between, then typically what we've just seen with the CDNs is that we try to bring the content in, now let's say, almost all the ASs to all the service provider. Okay, so if you have a request, then fine, you have the content. But if those other customers here connected somehow, they are never interested in the content, you may still have the content here depending on the strategy. So maybe we can do it in a more efficient way, especially if there's content that is only requested by very few customers. So how to deliver it, but not in the classical way uh, that you say, okay, we distribute it using a CDN. So maybe there's some better way. Then there's also the idea of how can we improve security. If you have a computer somewhere, you have an IP address, A, B, C, D, whatever. And if there's an attacker somewhere, you can attack the computer. I know there are firewalls and there are netbox and there are this and that, but as long as there are addresses, you can use all these attack methods. You can do SYN flooding. We learned this. Uh, we can do different types of denial of service attacks because like in the normal post service, you cannot stop the postman from delivering things. If someone knows your address, this guy can just send you something if you like it or not. So can we organize it another way? Can we just say that, okay, deliver only stuff when I requested it. So it's not allowed or even better, it's impossible to send content to me without any prior request. So only if I issued a request for some content, then someone is allowed to send me something. How can this be done? So in a nutshell, well, this ICN is something like a content delivery network, but it's unmanaged. It's not kind of a centralized a company saying, okay, now this is my strategic plan to place my servers inside the networks of an ISP. So, but this is more spontaneous. So we do the content delivery and the distribution on demand. And the idea is also that we always access content and not notes. What does it mean? If today you said, get me whatever, uh, uh, some content, a, b, uh, i dot html or whatever, then you always have to have here in the end a domain name and so on, which is then mapped to an address, whatever. So in the end, you address a node, a system, and then this system delivers the content. We learned this using HTTP and TCP, doing this routing and all these things. But really, you're not interested in the system. You're interested in the content. So why not only saying, I want to have this content? 
So that was the, uh, many years ago already the idea not only to have the uniform resource locator that in the end maps to a host, a number, an address, but there were also uniform resource identifiers that only say, okay, that's an identifier of content and wherever the host is. And well, one can say that this mapping is done, for example, by Google, that you say, I'm looking for tomatoes, and then Google tells you, okay, tomato is this and that server will give you some more information about tomato. ICN uses what we call a publish-subscribe paradigm. So we address content by a name. So I say, I'm interested in apples. So let's assume this is a name. Additionally, we augment the content with self-authentication. So I'm sure that really this is an Apple and it comes from an Apple expert. So if I ask for an Apple content from Apple expert, then I will get apples from Apple expert authentication. Additionally, we do a lot of in-network storage caching. So maybe if I want to have some information about Apple from the Apple expert, so maybe also my neighbor, so then you can access the cache or think of a page, front page of a newspaper. If you access it, maybe also the neighbors access it and so on and so on. So there are different approaches. So if you want to read more, there's a research group, the ITF, and there are uh, terms like content-centric networking, named data networking, and so on. These were one of the first ideas. And it's always the ideas, okay, I ask for content, so address by name. You do some additional verification so that you have, well, you verify that the name to content binding uh, is protected by cryptographic means. So for example, a sig signature that you know this is really uh, from the Apple expert, now example. Several architectures have been developed, starting here, Triad, that was one of the first, and then this NDN, which I will present, and a lot more sales, so there were some U.S. approaches, there were some European projects, and it's still ongoing. For example, ICNs for the Internet of Things, so that you subscribe, for example, that you get a temperature value from a certain sensor, and then this value then flows to you. So how does it work? Very, very high-level perspective. So assume Someone is the content supplier. This could be my temperature sensor, but this could be whatever. And someone wants to consume this. So that's interested in this. Then the supplier brings the content on some server. For example. So the content supplier delivers this content to a server. The server stores the content. Additionally, we publish a certain prefix in this example saying, okay, I know if someone is interested in this whatever is .org, it's a very simple example, I admit, then I know where to look at. Well, exactly in this server where it's now stored, for example. So the, there's a prefix published and stored in all these routers, which are now content routers. I will show this on the next slide in a bit more detail. So these routers, the content routers now, they know where to get the content or which interface. So in our example, this one router knows, ah, I get the content here over this interface. And this router knows, I, if someone asks for whatever org, then via this interface. So that's the idea. So the consumer now requests the data by the name. The consumer wants to know something about peanuts.org and this is called an interest. So the consumer sends an interest. Okay, and the interest is now forwarded and the routers, they store 
this interest in a so-called pending interest table. Okay, so the interest is forwarded and all the routers, they do not have to have the content, but at least they remember, okay, someone wants to look for this content. So they store this. Until we reach the content router that knows, ah, okay, this is where I, I have this. So I know where the peanuts is, forwards the interest, and now the content is delivered. So if you know how to satisfy the interest, perfect, you deliver the data. And so the idea is, if you don't know where the content is, at least you know the direction. And then you deliver the content, plus you cache it. You cache it in the content routers where the content comes by. So you flow through the content router, the content router stores this. So this is the idea. So it's here in this example, it's based on reverse path forwarding. So there are other approaches possible, but this is one of the examples. And some more details. And with the details, we will see that now the customer customer affects our backbone. Why? The customer issues an interest. And this interest changes the state in the network. Now the customers change the state in the network, so you affect the backbone. That's quite interesting, because the states are now data-driven, you issue your interest, and this lets the data, the content, flow through the routers, changing the states. So the end uses affect backbone states. And this is different uh, compared to today's internet. We have, yeah, we have the routing protocols. They do this, so the network itself, but not in the end, the end customer by request. So you, by asking for www.whatever.com, you do not change the state of the router. So this does not let the router store anything for you. Okay, so that's quite interesting. So how does it look like in a bit more detail without going into all the details because for ICNs you could have many lectures. So how does such a node, such a content router look like? Well, such a, uh, such a node here is a router and a storage. So the node can also, well, you can have your consumers, your producers of data, and you could be also only the forwarder of data, of interests. So they all participate now in our network. What's interesting here is that the content routers, they have different databases. And one is the so-called pending interest table, PIT. The pending interest table, as you just saw in the last slide, is where you store, oh, I saw an interest. I don't have the answer, but I saw this, so this is pending. So it's a, we store the received but not yet satisfied interest. So that's the database that records all this interest, received, not yet satisfied, so because I don't have the content, together with the interface from where they were received. So I know that from the interface zero, I received the interest. Here, in this context, it's often called phase. Why? This interface could be now really an interface to a network, wireless network, a fixed network, but also it could be a socket interface to an app application. So it's not always a networking interface in a classical sense, could be also an application. So this is why in this context it's often called face, so it's, but it's an interface in the end. So you know this interest came via the interface zero, the face zero. So that's the idea. We can also store the interfaces to where the interest were forwarded and all these things. So there are some optimizations possible. Okay, so if we have interests for the same data, we can aggregate it here in our pending interest table. We also saw that 
after our producer said, oh, we have this peanuts.org, this content, we created entries in a forwarding information base. Here we store prefixes plus the interface, the faces that can be used to retrieve data using this prefix. So what does it mean? So this is a database where you have all these prefixes and the prefix then is associated here, park.com for example, with interface 0 and 1. So in our case via the uh, fixed uh, connection and wireless connection, you could get some more content with this prefix park.com looks like URL similar it's not exactly the same but it looks like so you know if someone is interested for this then check for via these interfaces so you can have additional ranking for the list of these faces for each prefix and each, each of these faces then may be associated with additional information that facilitates this forwarding strategy decisions bit confusing Okay, I can always uh, point to the RFC, but also to the next slide where I will give you an example. This example shows NDN. This is one way of implementing an ICN. There are different ways. So diff different ways how this works. So what do we have here? This setting shows three content routers, A, B, and C. So those routers are connected, simple network. We have two publishers, Publisher 1 and Publisher 2. So Publisher 1 publishes, in this example, okay, everything that is related to this, looks like URL, auEB.gr for Greece. So that's Publisher for everything that starts with this prefix. Okay, and this is stored in the FIB forwarding information base. Fine. And this information that flows along the network so that the content router A knows, okay, everything that goes there, oh, I saw this, well, that someone has this content, via this face towards this content router C. So I know if I want to know something for this name, this prefix, then I have to ask the route content router C. There's another publisher, and this publisher tells us, yes, if you know someone wants to know something for this prefix, aoeb.gr slash cs, computer science for example, then I know where this publisher 2 is. And this also goes into the forwarding information base of content router A. So content router A now knows if someone wants to ask something for .gr slash whatever, then I go ask C. If, but if someone asks something for CS, then I go to B. So that is the setting. And now we start with the subscriber sending an interest packet for a certain content. Now let's take as an example. I want to know something about and this example uh, B uh, etc slash AI slash new dot htm. So this it's not computer science, but now AI department, or whatever. Uh, something about AI. So it doesn't really match whatever publisher 2 published, but it matches the prefix uh, that leads to publisher 1. So how does it work? We send this interest. That's the first thing. Okay. So we're interested in this. Now the content router A reads the interest and does the following. It matches the first prefix, so I forward it to content router C, and I enter in my pending interest table here that from the direction of subscriber 
I receive the interest. That's now in the pending interest table. So that's the idea. So you receive the packet, you check where to forward. In this case, it's C. You forward the packet to a C and you store the name of the request. Okay, fine. Now in C, the same takes place. So you say, okay, pending interest. You insert this in the table. But in this case, you know, ah, this goes to Publisher 1, because Publisher 1, uh, the prefix that matches, I can forward it to Publisher 1. That's good. Okay, so forward it to Publisher 1. Now Publisher 1 sees, okay, interest in something, uh, but um, now I've got the data. Perfect. So I return the data. And now, well, basically, forget this one. Now we receive the data, which means we can delete this pending interest because it's not pending anymore, as you see. But now we have the data and we cache it. So we cache the data. It's not pending anymore. It's basically for this content router is fulfilled. Perfect. And we cache it. But we also know where the request comes from. It was the content router A. As you still see here, it was the content router A. So we have to forward it to content router A. Same happens here. Perfect. It's not any longer pending. We know the subscriber asked for it. And I will cache it, the content, whatever the content is. And I will then also forward this to the subscriber. So this is the final picture and you see how the interest is forwarded along this red path from the subscriber to the publisher and then the data flows back the reverse path. So that's the idea. So that's uh, quite nice because now with this scheme you see you cannot attack the subscriber. Well, no one forwards anything if there was no request. So if you now just send some data in the network, how? You, you cannot just send data into the network. So that's uh, the idea here. So this is one way of implementing this. There are other ways. So ICN does not automatically mean it's a named data network. There are many different ideas. That shows a second example without now going into all the details. But basically, that's a European project sale. It says, okay, we do a mixture. We don't have this pure content-driven thing, but if we have a publisher, now the publisher is here on the left, then the publisher publish something, that is my step one. And we have so-called NRSs, name resolution systems, and they're used to map data objects, names to locators. So this NRS knows, aha, uh -huh, this content, my super duper Apple, whatever recipe, that comes from this publisher. So I know the location for this super duper Apple recipe. So maybe something like this, the bacon eyes, Apple Pie. Okay, and then this information you see, this is not completely decentralized, but you have some kind of a global NRS. So you can have several of them, etc. etc. But so the idea is the published message now goes to this global NRS, and this stores all these mappings, and you replace old mappings. And now if you want to get this recipe, access subscriber, you ask for Apple recipe, my Apple recipe, your local NRS, which will then ask for the global and will get back the information in return. So if you want to request the content, you send your get message to the local NRS, this forwards it to the global NRS, global NRS returns a locator because we have this mapping, via the local NRS to the subscriber. 
Now the subscriber has the locator, so knows the location. And now the subscriber can send the get message to the publisher. Okay? And then there are two ways of how this can be done. More details, see the link. Two different ways. And roughly spoken, uh, we have one way of doing so. Uh, this is the classical regular routing. What you can see here. So classical regular routing. We know how this works with a GET request and a, a response. So that is one way of doing so. So you send the GET message through this, what's called here, case two routers perform then the regular routing and the publisher will respond with the data in the data message. But you can also do it similar to an NDN where you use the content routers here for name-based routing. So this can be also uh, done. So you send the get message in step A. Uh, basically, this is like uh, our interest to the local content router, which forwards the message until the publisher is reached. And then the content will be sent back by the publisher then as a data message, propagated the same way back where the me get message came from. So this is a case of a mixture of regular classical routing and this is similar to NDN. So you see, ICNs don't have to come in a pure manner that you say oh, this is only publish, subscribe, but there are also mixed versions. Okay, so ICNs, still hot topic, uh, a lot of research, many new fields coming up like as I said, for IoT, but also um, ICNs for critical infrastructure. So how can you survive if the network breaks down, but you uh, can you then stand, still send your interest message, get information back, etc. There are many open issues, uh, for example, naming. How do you name things? Should be unique, should be independent of the location, easy to manage, maybe also human friendly. So apple pie from me, etc. So the difficulty is we have different naming schemes with different properties. How to handle this? How to handle routing? How much state should you really store in these content routers? When do you delete state? How often do you update? If you are nagging all the time, send me, send me, send me. How often do you then store these interests, etc.? And how do we handle the cache? Caching is the main concept. So bring data closer to customers, similar to CDNs. But then with caching, they, you have replacement policies, updating, and then many open questions when it comes to business models. Why to do this? Uh, how to secure this? How to scale it? How to perform network management? And what about wireless and mobile networks? If you suddenly have uh, devices handing over from now one network in another one. There's still a lot to do for research, but a very interesting paradigm. So coming to some questions, what is the core idea of the ICNs? What is the advantage? Why doing ICNs? And try to explain in your own word how an NDN, this is one example of ICN, how this works, and what the difference is to classical networks. And please, ICNs, there's ongoing research. Check the current developments and compare the approaches and you saw some first links to enter this word of ICNs.